In this video I'm going to show the use of the path falloff. So when you go to your Modo Modes toolbar you have falloff and there you have a path falloff. So that is the falloff that I am going to use. First I'm going to activate the skill tool by pressing the R key and you see now in the tool pipe that my transform tool has become active. Then I'm going to add the path falloff. Now in toolpipe you see that I have my scale tool, a path falloff and a curve path. And with the curve path selected in the toolpipe I can now draw out a curve. So click for a first point, click for a second. And as you can see the transform tool also jumps to that point because I have no action center set and I prefer it to be at the origin. So I'm going to I'm going to set my action center to origin and now it will stay there. But you also see that because I changed the action center, now my curve has disappeared. So again, with the curve path selected in the tool pipe, I'm going to click to create curve points. And I'm going to undo because I'm going to draw them on the grid. And by the way, when I go to my work plane, Alt Options, I have Lock Plane to Origin on, so that now you see that all my points are nicely on the grid. I haven't done any scaling at this point, and there are a few things to take into consideration. So when you go to your tool properties, you have of course your transform tool, scale X, Y, and Z. And then you have the settings for your curve path, and in the path falloff, the size is also very important. So let's do some actual scaling. Scale in Y, scale in X, and scale in Z. And now with the path falloff that I have drawn out, the scaling is actually being performed with that falloff. So everything is live at this point. So I can move these points around, I can move them of course also up, and you see that the scaling updates according to that path falloff. And the further away, the less influence of course the scaling will have according to the size of the path falloff. So if I set that for instance to 100 millimeters, you see that these points do not have an effect anymore. Well, it does a bit because of the, the slope of the curve, so this point will affect a bit, but if I drag that up further away, you see that now that when I... and sometimes the update of happens a bit later, so you saw some geometry jump around, but now when I Manipulate these, you see nothing much happens. But when I go closer again, then scaling will happen. And what just happens when I click off, I will create another point. That is because my curve path mode is being set to add. I'm going to set it to edit. And press Ctrl Z, edit, so that I don't accidentally add. points. So this is a first demonstration of the curve path falloff. Here I have a beam. Again, I'm... Oh, I could use the move tool, so W for move. So now you see the transform tool has been activated in the tool pipe. I'm going to set a falloff. Uh, first I'm going to set my action center to origin and then my falloff to path falloff. And on top of that, I am going to add a falloff and I'm going to add a radial falloff. I'm going to put it over here. Something like that maybe. Doesn't really matter at this point. Now my two properties have become bigger, so I should drag them up. And I'm going to do some moving, and you see that's, oops, 
Control Z to undo first. Also, I have to draw out my curve path. So select curve path. And for instance, in the right view, I'm going to create a few curve points. Go back to perspective view. And now I'm going to do some moving. And again, the size of the path falloff is important. So if I set that to one meter, that's a bit low maybe, maybe three meters. And then do some moving. And you see now when I move around with the curve points, actual fall off is being modulated through these curve points, but also in this case through this radial fall off. So if I make that one a bit bigger, then also my path fall off will have more effects just like that. So you're not restricted to using the path falloff in itself. I have experienced that it is best to first add the path falloff and then add another falloff if you want to work with multiple falloffs in combination with the path falloff. If you first add a radial falloff or a linear falloff and then the path falloff, then I've experienced that that does not work very well, but anyway, you can experiment with it. And sometimes when you do some moving like I've done now, you see that the ge geometry jumps a bit, but when you click on a point, then the geometry, eh, on the point of the path, then the geometry adjusts again to where it should be. So. Just like that. And then press the escape key a couple of times. And now this is my end result. To press the end key for a new layer, maybe add a cylinder. I'm going to delete my top and bottom polygons. Going to front view. So again, just a demonstration of the path fall off. I'm going to activate the push tool this, this time. So deform and then we have the push tool. Then I'm going to add a path fall off. Now with the curve path selected in the tool pipe I can draw out my curves like that. I'm going to see in the right view they are all at the center in Z, front view. Then, in order to activate the push tool, I have to select it in the tool pipe and click in the viewport. And when I drag it out, and checking my path fall off size, it's a bit big maybe right now, so one. That's also maybe a bit big, 0.75. Now when you drag the control points of the curve, you see that the push tool is being modulated through the path falloff. And of course I can adjust the push even more. Just like that. And everything is live, of course. Maybe another example. You should get the idea by now. So if I go to my polygon, my pen tool. The wall modes, both sides offset 5 millimeters. So if I click now, I'm going to shift X to extrude this. Okay. And now again with the 
push tool, so deform, push. And I still have my curve path in my tool pipe, so select the curve path, come back to my top view, and click to create curve points. They don't have to be precise, you can adjust them later anyhow. So perspective, oops, perspective view. Now if I select my push tool and click in the viewport, I can drag out and you see what happens. I'm going back to my top view and now if I drag around these points, you see that Again, the push tool is being modulated by the fall-off. And as you see, when I drag this closer to that one, it will have an effect on that geometry over there because of my fall-off size. Just like that. Very interesting tool, a lot of interesting results can be achieved with this. And I can, of course, adjust the push. Just like that. Let's escape to clear my tooth pipe again. Perspective. And there we go. Geometry. So, in order to use the path fall off, you can activate the tool you want, for instance, the Scale Move Rotate tool or other tools, tools that work with a falloff, in this case the Rotate tool. Then you add the falloff, so Path falloff. In order to draw out the path, you have to make sure that the curve path in the tool pipe is selected. So if I go to my top view, now I can draw out my curve, but you see in that transform tools, because there is no action center, they follow my last left click, and so I'm going to set that simply to origin. And now I have to, with the curve pass, let it draw out the curve again, like that. Then I can select my transform tool in the tool pipe and do some rotation. Of course, also my size is important, so if I set that at 0.5, I will, the, the, the curve points will have less of an influence. Like the one is a bit much, so 0.5. And, of course, everything is live, so I can still move these curve points around to get a different result. So that's it about the path fall off. Hope you've enjoyed it.